What's up Ozones, welcome to the Ozone and welcome to a very very special video for me. So we do the Dark Rooms podcast, it is a FNAF podcast starring me, Psychic, Inky and Underscore and we got a pretty big guest on it and I'm, I'm very excited to show you this. We got the man himself, D. Huster, um, I'll let him introduce himself in the video but I'm going to show you basically 20 minutes of the podcast. If you want to listen to the full thing, it will be in the description below. Listen to the Dark Rooms podcast because it's one of my favorite projects that I've done on YouTube so far with a bunch of great friends. Uh, and I'm so glad that we could get the Houston on. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking some time just to talk to us. So, um, yeah, let's get straight into the podcast. <laughs> Everybody and welcome back to episode 18 of the Dark Rooms podcast. I'm Psychic and I'm being joined by Ozone, Inky, and Underscore. And today we're going to be having a chat. Um, we are joined by a very special guest today, and so we're joined by De Husta. Hi, <laughs> I'm De Husta. <laughs> I uh, produce music for I don't know. I just produce music for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for for video hobby. games, fan songs for. Gonna start doing Dream SMP stuff. Oh, really? Ooh, interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. We have a few questions to ask. Uh, yes. Ask we, we, obviously, it's a very rare opportunity stuff like this, and we're we're very excited and grateful to have you on the on the podcast here. I think the first question we have is how long have you been making music, and what inspired you? I just, I get inspired by a lot of stuff, but since I was a kid, I always. I always liked to listen to, I guess as a backstory, to uh, acapella music. That's all I listened to until I was eight. Ah, um, my dad loved it, and so he always shared it with us. And I love listening to the beatboxer. So I grew up wanting to beatbox, trying to beatbox, loving the beatboxing noises, to the point where <clears throat> now, you know, when I was 16, I did a couple competitions uh, in beatboxing. But now going back to the backstory, um, <laughs> when I was eight, I figured out, oh, I really like music and the, the rhythms that come with that, you know? And uh, so when I was, yeah, like eight or nine, my dad got me Ableton Live, um, and I messed around with that. I didn't even have a MIDI keyboard for a while. I love the idea of making stuff that I've thought of <laughs> um, that's come from my thoughts that I can put into a, a software and then put into music. I saw, I've seen a video of you beatboxing. So and it's, it's very, it's, it's, uh, oh, I was just blown tour? away by Yeah, it. from the tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna um, ask you about that. Like, do you, you still do all of that, obviously. And... Yes, but I, I, it's more of like a side thing for live performances. Yes, yeah, fair enough. Um, just cause it's fun. And how mm -hmm. do you like, how do you, how do you get good at that? Like, how do you learn it? Like, I remember like usually, <laughs> <laughs> Most most people get the you know like the the boots and cats thing you know where the but I I've never learned yeah, that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, go with you. <laughs> that was great. Uh, which is great. It gives you a good rhythm. Honestly, you just I don't know. It's kind of I don't know if you've seen Charlie Puth. Uh, oh. Kind of go through his process, but he does the same thing. He he has a, a melody in his head or a bass line. And he starts beatboxing a rhythm with it and then just builds on top of it. Creates noises. That's pretty much it. You just create oh, noise. Wow. So I'm not cool. super good at it. I wish I was. I mean, probably better than us, so. Yeah, definitely better than anything we could do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, Inky, that was, that was a poor effort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Try again. You want me to go again? Yeah, go again, Inky. Yeah. Oh, gosh. All right. Uh, Oh, hey. changing it up. There we go. Okay, yeah. now, now we need now we need a D Houston version. <laughs> oh no! In mine, it, it's Houston got the robot bass, bass and it's got the throw bass. Like, uh, hold up, uh, like a little, something like that, or all right. Know. What? Nice. <laughs> <I don't> even... <laughs> How? That's just like so impressive to me. Out of curiosity, yeah. what is your favorite piece? That you've made. If you have my one. songs, uh, yeah, um, both in general, even like okay, I, 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 that's a that's a pretty big or, question. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. 
uh, one of my favorite songs in general that I love to listen to, is, I guess one of my favorite bands is Muse. Um, Muse yes. is amazing. I love their stuff. And I've really them. loved... I've loved listening to Five Seconds of Summer. <laughs> They're super yes. good as well. Um, their new stuff is especially... Oh, AJR. <laughs> not another very good one. Oh, and The Killers. Holy, The Killers are awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love their stuff. I've heard a couple of their songs. Good music taste. Yeah. I think all of them kind of change over time. I know definitely with Five Seconds of Summer, their, their kind of early stuff was a lot different to... Oh, yeah. To, they were like very pop-y. Yeah. And now it's like just very electronic pop i love yeah it. like I it's guess nice the, to see the development it's just i feel like that's a lot that's for like a lot of bands because like i mean if you do the same thing over and over again you won't really go anywhere so i kind of get it but sometimes yep, people yeah. are like this old stuff was really good yeah do more of this well and that's exactly i took a master class with um ryan tedder the guy who writes for uh and produces for one republic oh. um oh wow he, super good class um but he was saying how you, you, as a musician, you have to, every era, you know, usually there's a, a, a culture of music that lasts for like eight to 10 years. And then it, you can see it move on to something else. Like right now, you know, like you were saying, with Five Seconds of the Summer back in the day, 10 years ago, pop rock was really popular. Um, and now I feel like 80s, 80s music is getting very, very popular. You know, yeah. you can see Charlie Puth, Dua Lipa. It's very like modern day '80s vibe, and I love it. It's so good. Cool. And so you have to like move with the with the music genre that's that's coming out, and that's just moving with the world in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But something to keep in mind. I'm sad because a lot of the FNAF listeners like the 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 what do you call them? Like just the constant kick and snare. Techno, yeah, like, yeah. yeah like big, heavy, almost like dubstep feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah very electronic in that sense. And so I was like, you know, what? I really want to, man, just nail it differently and and not go down that road. And it, yeah. with it being a full album, the Frasbear Frights album we're trying to do, oh. I feel like that'd be fun for everybody to listen to. Just have different yeah, genres like, like that. Yeah, different yeah. variety, so that it, because it doesn't get boring. Yeah, it doesn't get boring. Nothing's gonna feel like to say repetitive yes yeah. i i do want to ask though do you feel like um you're kind of you, you're scared of how like the people are going to take it because yeah, it's absolutely. so different yeah. yeah yeah but but you're you're excited to like experiment with different things and yes. go different ways yeah yep it's, it's, nice. it's kind of like um i feel similar to ajr in the sense of they are very good at experimenting their sounds sometimes it hits sometimes it doesn't but they're they're getting good enough that they can keep using those these weird sounds that work well <laughs> with, with these songs so that's what i'm hoping for as well so as far as lonely freddy uh i think it really goes to show uh how good a song is when my only like uh my only slight problem with it is that i felt like it was a little on the short side is there a reason for that that's what everybody said <laughs> <laughs> and don't get me wrong it's i i love the song the way it is it's just yeah. it's so good that like part of me wants more of it oh uh, that totally makes sense yeah that was that was probably one of my worries as well because it, it builds for so long for the first minute and then all of a sudden you get the the mid section where the it starts to to climax Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the like the big chorus, and then it drowns back out in the end. Yeah. But when I was writing, I was like, you know, that's that's what I was I trying to get at, you know, because yeah, it okay. was a short story, and he does, you know, the the kid. I can't even remember the main character's name. Alec. There's so many stories. Alec. 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 Yeah. Yes, Alec. You know, uh, is a jerk, and then realizes but that he, he's he needs to be better but it's too late and for a quick you know a quick moment him and freddy change bodies and and that's it and you're like oh crap <laughs> yeah I like, I like the <laughs> way know? i like the way you you characterize that to the story and as oh. sort of like a sort of a mental image of the song as sort of yeah. a hill like you get to the top of the hill and go back down it's there, there's yeah. no build back up right. yes <laughs> And that, I'm, and, so, I'm yeah. so glad that came across. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes total sense now that you say it. And now, now for my extremely my, my <laughs> this this question has been 
has just been Gosh. eating at me. For, for, <laughs> it really is. Yes. Please. <laughs> who who is whistling in the song? <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my dad, actually. Seriously? <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, I I can't whistle that high, and Daco couldn't either. So I was like, "Frick, who knows how to do this?" And I was like, "Dude, my dad awesome. is really good at whistling." So that is so, hilarious. I did not cool. expect such an interesting answer for it. Well, what were you like expecting? You or, I was thought it was, I thought it was just going to be him or Daco or someone. <laughs> that's dad. amazing. That's. I'm glad that you asked that now, Inky. I'm very glad I, I asked that as well. So, so yeah, you said "Darkest Desire" is your first thing with Daco, uh, yeah. and. Wow, like what a way to start off, honestly. What a song. You know, it, it's kind uh, of a great start having those, um, you know, knowing people to kind of get that kickstart. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And you like immediately proved yourself as well. Like, the... <laughs> that was the worry was like, is this going to do well? Is it not? Is Daka going to want to keep working with me? I remember uh, I remember when I when I saw it, it was like Daka and Dehuse. I was like, hey, I listened to that guy. That's really cool. Yeah, but now we're, we're like, we're, I feel like we're almost going to be partners for life because we have so <laughs> many right. plans in the future. Oh, nice. I mean, you guys got a lot of books to cover. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Oh, Listen, you're, you're not doing all of them, are you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. Wait, Every really? single oh, one. Oh, my God. No way. It'll probably take three three years to finish all this. Gotta be kidding okay. me. I, I gotta ask. Have That's you amazing. heard about Tales from the Pizza Plex? No. What the heck? What? They're doing <laughs> a, basically a sequel series to Fazbear Frights. <laughs> Oh it's Pizza Flex centered. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, more books. Yeah. Uh, that's three years is turning into nine years. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, wait. Speaking of lines, what does I'm gonna take you to the green mean? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's been... <laughs> that's in the story in Lonely Freddy. You know when he when he changes his eye color when he's so, it's so, green. So does the eye color it had something to do with yeah, the eye color? I, I, I told thought you. It, I thought it was. I just wanted to make sure because we, we were we were joking around it's saying no that it was like golf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are so. saying it's like weed. Some people are saying it's like grass. <laughs> like you guys, you guys interpret however you want. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can play the verse of Lonely Freddy real quick. If you <laughs> <know>. <laughs> oh, Inky. <laughs> Why? Uh, let's, yeah. well, let's turn it up a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Got a concert now. Good. Oh, wait, no, it goes lower. Wait, what's the... Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 I think that third chord you played is supposed to be inverted. Invert, yeah, that's probably right. I'm just playing yeah. the very the basic ones of it. Dude, that's good, dude. That's, Thank you. That's impressive. That's it's so catchy. It, 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 yeah, it's, you yeah. instantly know what it is. Yeah. Like, from the from the from the second I heard the preview with the whistling, I was like, "This is so different. This is so good. I'm gonna love this." And I do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Keep on telling me that. Cause sometimes when I I hate saying it, but sometimes the numbers don't always show the the. I don't yeah. know the how much people enjoy it. I get how what you're saying. It deserves, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. The numbers are always really tough on like motivation and yeah you know, especially if it's how like, you perceive how people perceive your song especially if it's like a, a very big passion project and it like doesn't yeah. perform as well so uh, yeah. how do you how do you handle criticism yeah oh i'm all for it if if it's constructive criticism and it's positive um they're not doing it to demean me then yeah. uh, i'm all for exactly. that yeah. but if it if it's if i can tell from the get-go they're just doing it because they're jealous or it's not for a for the purpose of building me up, then I'm I I kind of shut my ears off, say okay, whatever. <laughs> That's really good. not worth my time. Almost. Yeah. And it is with anything on on YouTube. You see all the hate comments as well, but you also see the majority of the time I see so many sincere and genuine comments that they they outweigh the 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 negative comments, which is yeah, really nice. Certainly. When you are writing a song. When do you look at it and be like, this is 100% finished? Oh, that's a hard question. That's oh. a really good question because I often struggle with that too. Like, I'll I'll go back and think of something to add that I don't Yeah, know. like, like when when do you know not to add any more instruments? So, I've, uh, I've uh, talking to Charlie has really helped me to understand production a little more. And I guess to pay attention to other people's production, um, like radio music in general. Because, if you mm. notice... Majority of the time, radio music is very 
simple, super simple. Um, but it's just enough to still be complicated. Um, and it keeps the rhythm going and it keeps it, it gives you different melodies so that you're never bored of the song. Um, and they have different ad libs and stuff in the background. And so I've, I used to struggle a lot with overcomplicating uh, the production um, on my songs. And I've noticed when it's simple enough to, to still be complicated um, and still entertain me at the same time, so that I'm never, if I ever find myself getting bored while listening to the song, I know there's more stuff I need to add. Okay. Um, but if I, I'm listening to the song and I don't ever feel any cringe in the sense of like just uncomfortable, I'm like, ooh, I could have done that better, or that I need a filler here, then I'm good. And if I get goosebumps by the end of it, then I, I'm happy. We are an hour yeah. if we want to start wrapping up. So, yeah. do you have any more questions? Um, um, we, feel like we could certainly questions. ask a lot more, but yeah. we really just. <laughs> um, if, if you're allowed to say, um, do you have any future projects that you're like super excited for? Yes, I have quite a few. Um, the one I already said, Dream SMP stuff, that's for me. I'm working on that. Yeah. Just a personal um, project. I know I've been very, yes, I know I've been very uh, distant on my YouTube channel, <laughs> but it's for a reason, I promise. It's all, it's right. all the prepping I'm doing. Because I'm putting out, this is also something very exclusive. Nobody really knows about this. Um, I I went through a very difficult time last year with my you know, a heartbreak that ended up with, uh, on top of that, with my grandma passing away um, and a lot of emotional turmoil there uh, to where I was sad, then I was happy, then I was super angry, very confused, very frustrated, just all over the place. Um so I wrote, and I'm writing, I have half a song left to finish it, an album um, that I was going to put under my name, Dallin, my my full name, but I'm pretty sure I'm just going to put it under, like, the Houston name. Because Charlie, you know, Charlie's done an album uh, under CG5 as well that wasn't, you know, anything related to CG5. And I feel like... Uh, True fans will really appreciate the album because <clears throat> it, it's it's a journey pretty much of processing things and letting go. That was our last question. However, there's one more thing, and I'm very sorry yeah. about this, but <laughs> as tradition on the Dark Rooms podcast, uh, you get to do the ending speech. So three, two, one, go. Oh, <laughs> oh ending speech. Uh, uh, this happens every time. <laughs> happens every time. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> Why would you do this to him? Is this supposed to be it's never going to happen. It's tradition. I it's tradition. You can make it inspired. You can totally make it inspired if you want. <laughs> uh, I am well. I I'll say thank you for putting me on the podcast or wanting me to to be on this. It's been super thank fun. Thank you. Hopefully yeah, it was entertaining yeah. enough and it got you some answers to your questions. And I'm yeah. hoping you know I can do more of this with other people and with you guys again in the future. Yeah, um, that would be amazing. Yeah, awesome. if you ever want to come back and. Yeah. Feel free. We'd yeah, love to have some like we'd lost. love to have some more amazing guests. To maybe put in a good word. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> yeah. Underscore. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Underscore. Make sure to reach out to them first. Yeah. Um, That's fair. And we are yeah, so yeah, grateful yeah, for yeah, having you on. And thanks, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to us. It means a lot to us. Yes, absolutely. I wanna. That's. I try and do that, but I'm not super good at it. I try and make sure <laughs> you guys know. Uh, I appreciate you for, for all you do. I, I would not be here without you guys. Um, and that's to, to people here in the group and, and fans as well. And to even say, to even say I have fans is bizarre. That is, that is just mind blowing. They're um, taking it in. <laughs> and, and I don't, I don't think I'll ever take it in <laughs> because it's, it, <laughs> I don't know. It's just such a weird concept. Yeah. But I'm glad people yeah. enjoy my music enough to want to listen to it because that's that's my my whole point is making songs that people enjoy. Can I ask one more question that I just remembered? Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> oh, no. I, did, I I believe, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I believe no, you like you no, like no. you like last October you released like an, another uh, like an animation for another uh, Ultimate Fright. Is that song longer than it is on iTunes in the video? <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it oh, is. No. I, 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 feel, I feel like there's like a little extra bit to it. I was like... Uh, let me see. Ultimate Fry 427. Yeah. I love how this is the last question. The YouTube <laughs> I just <laughs> thought of it. I, I, yeah, I, I just, don't even know that. Can, can we ask him his favorite color just so we have a like, good question? <laughs> we must for know. <laughs> the logo pretty much sums up. Purple, let's like, go! Oh, okay, purple, purple. purple. All right, purple, all right. Purple and white. You have to do that combo. Okay. Well, oh, that, that's really cool. Thanks once again for joining us on the, this episode of Darkrooms Podcast, and that'll be the end of this episode. Thank you so much for watching this video, uh, and yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.